Welcome back to Killing Your Pets cast. We're going to take a quick break from all the different ways you can kill your pets to talk about anime. Yeah. Here on this show, where we talk about anime when we're not killing our pets. <laughs> this may be my fa- most, this might be my favorite contextualist intro we've had. <laughs> we've had a few. <laughs> So, double episode, because uh, we had some, some con crud issues last week. So we've got, uh, which kind of works out, because we're down to three shows. I don't think talking about two episodes each of three shows is some horrendous yeah, burden. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it might actually be, like, enough for a decent conversation. Uh, but this week, we did watch Chio's School Road, episode nine, in which, in part one, makeover, 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 makeover. That's a deep cut. Uh, only makeover, 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 makeover. There we go. Scott gets it. Yep. Uh, is that a Simpsons joke? No, it's Clone High. I think I showed you the first two episodes, but that this is like oh, the yeah. episode five or okay, six. Gotcha. So one of these days we'll uh, we'll sit yeah. down and watch the rest of that. But yeah. Uh, in part two, Ando tries to impress Chio by acting out a boy's love scene with his kohai, but it backfires. And then in episode 10, part one, everyone eats candy. In part two, Discount Nita's, I apparently forgot his name over the course of the week. That's Ando, by the way. His younger sister, Butt Girl, berates him for quitting his delinquent lifestyle. And then in part three, Ando and George the Cat have a silent film-esque farce with lots of slapstick. I love the makeover. I just love the progressive like changes to uh, Chio over time. I also find it hilarious we brought back creepy uh, homeless office worker dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I found that first one kind of, it was just kind of there. I w- it was fine. I was entertained while I was watching it. And then yeah. as soon as it was over, I couldn't have told you much about it. And that was 14 days ago now. So, no, I guess that would have only been eight days ago. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is the creepiest dude, though. Yeah. I mean, like. These girls should not be hanging out with this dude. No. Like, for real, though. But I do... Again, I just love not only the makeover that she goes through. I love how Manana, her like, in her crazy little high school girl world, suddenly flashes forward uh, to the future <laughs> where Chio is now dating, uh, you know, n- now successful buying cars. Meanwhile, Manana is riding her bike to the grocery store, barely able to afford vegetables. <laughs> It's I, I don't know I, I I thought that was like the highlight of that whole sequence. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then in in the second part of the first episode, I was surprised by like I I'm sure everybody was expecting. Well, let's just listen to old man Ben talk about how creepy it was that we're shipping mm-hmm. this older guy with this younger girl. It was so chaste and sweet. Like there was nothing sexualized or creepy about it. It mm. was just like. He kind of likes this girl. Yeah. And wants her to like him. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. And I think, okay, so he looks like he's way older, Mm -hmm. but he's also a delinquent. Yeah. I'm thinking he's like maybe, maybe 20, 21. I'm not sure. I mean, it's still kind of weird and awkward, but. It it would be weird and awkward if I thought there was ever any chance they would ever actually get together, but Mm -hmm. I don't. So. Also, Japan's a little bit different. Like a twenty-year-old, a twenty-year-old, a twenty-one-year-old, and a sixteen-year-old is actually not impossible culturally. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, let's let's see. Let's assume he's twenty, half his age plus seven. Yeah, she's not that much younger than than the standardized creepiness threshold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's algebra. It's science. But yeah. but yeah, no, the way that they do it is just really cute. I'm sorry, the fact that Ando has a crush <laughs> on Chio is spectacular to me because I'm like Chio's not into like is is not really into that she uh and especially like here's the thing I could see her really getting into him if he acted like himself but he continues to act like the wrong kind of person for it and the best the tip like the cherry on top is when he tries to uh, reenact a boys love scene yeah and it's like nope you missed you you read all the signals completely wrong and his (laughs) friends into him and that's great also, um, I don't know if anybody noticed, she's got a, uh, on the tip of her pencil, mm-hmm. is Claptrap from yeah. Borderlands 
Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, I did not notice that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, straight up claptrap. I love the fact that this mangaka is straight up an American gaming fan. <laughs> like, to the point where, like, I don't think Borderlands did very well in Japan, and yep. Yeah. Yeah. I seriously doubt it. First person shooter is not a big deal over there. No, that dude, that dude's a real gamer girl, and I appreciate it with all the stuff he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, beyond that, uh, also the the freaking scene with the stripper pole, man. I lost it <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's not sexy. Yeah. yeah. It is a, it is a, it is a high school year, a girl with a with that wig on, and I'm just like, <laughs> this is the best. This is like this is this whole scene. I was like, why was this in the trailer? Boom, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's just as good as I was hoping. Yeah. Like I've I've been knifing this for a couple of weeks now. And in this in episode nine, I started to think, like, is this actually because the the basis on which I've been knifing it is it's got these problems and I just kind of don't have any faith that it's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. I think it might actually be over the course of these last few episodes, like steadily becoming less creepy. Like it still walks it up to the line. Yeah. But it does, it didn't used to know when to stop. Now it feels like oftentimes it does. It'll walk it right up to the point and then go, okay, now we're good. Yeah. Also, I love the fact that it's a, it, like, again, Grand Theft Auto, not incredibly big in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, she that the game where she got the whole stripper pole thing from was obviously, yeah, obviously that, scene. Yeah, that, that scene. Yeah, I got to imagine like an, an, the average Japanese audience watching this just like <laughs> because this whole this whole like idea of these are stories of a girl walking to school every day. You could have done this a million different ways. This is a very esoteric way that this manga guy decided to do this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have a girl who is an American-style gamer? <laughs> okay. Sure. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's So so that's that's episode 9. In episode 10, I mean the the clear highlight for me was the third part where it was it just went oh, straight I... no dialogue silent film. Yeah. That that kind of kind of came out of nowhere for me. I was like, are they just gonna? Okay, they are. Cool. Yeah, this this is more like closer to what I expected this show might be, where it was a little more experimental. Yeah, told its stories in different ways. I'm I'm glad they're. I mean, it took them kind of ten episodes to really start playing around with the format, but I'm glad they finally got around to it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say that the first part did much for me. They did. They ate candy. Candy's real good. I like candy. Is okay. there a punchline here? Okay, allow me to be the guy. I really love that segment. It was super cute. <laughs> just watching her like have fun and be expressive was like, I, I, sometimes I just want to watch little girls be cute <laughs> and fun and have a good time. It, the, it makes me feel like my 31-year-old adult life isn't so... <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think the part that made, made that a bit better for me, too, was the fact that the art was really good this mm. whole episode, too. Oh, yeah. Like, noticeably from the last one to me. I felt like the art was just rock solid front to back in this whole one. And I just love, like you said, like, I think the expressions, the way they animate it, and they, the way they're storyboarding a lot of it, I think just really, really did a lot of work for me. Yeah. It's, uh, it, they, I do love the shot where she's like, you should try these banana ones as she's munching down on it. Yeah. Manana's, can we talk about Manana's resting face? Because mm. it is the, it is. Oh, I love, yeah. Like a derpy frog face thing yeah. she does. Yeah. That <laughs> face may be the best in this show. Every time she puts it on, I'm like, something great is about to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, just, I'm, I liked that segment just because it's nice to see this girl who's usually uptight, mm -hmm. let her, like, let herself be herself. And her friends encourage her, like, have fun. Have a good time. Stop being so wound up. And it's like, we don't mind that you're a goody two-shoes. We just don't want you to hurt your, you hurt your own happiness for it. And, yeah, it's nice. I, mm -hmm. thought, that, I thought that was good. Yeah, I mean, I certainly don't wouldn't say I found anything in it, in it objectionable. It just did not do quite as much for me as pretty much anything else in this pair of episodes. Second part, though, was interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think what even happened in the second uh, part. In the second part, um, uh, as Chio's walking to school, she sees Concho Girl right. uh, walking in front of her, but takes the wrong way to school. So, out of curiosity, she follows her and ends up seeing that she's spying on 
Ando in a convenience store. As it turns out, she is Ando's little sister, right. and she doesn't quite like the fact that her brother stopped being a delinquent because that was, quote, the coolest thing. <laughs> and so, as it turns out, uh, Chio gets exposed as the person that changed his life, mm -hmm. which leads her to believe that she must have some significant slash romantic importance to... Yeah. And uh, she, she decides to... <laughs> <laughs> she decides that she must die, which I, I, I love this little shit. I love, I like, she's, she's an annoying little brat, but I love her intensity. And uh, like, and I love the, fa oh my God, when Manana comes back in, mm. she's just ready to yeah. fucking go. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was cute. I, when I talk about the objectionable portions of this show, I mean, it did, I know. Everybody on Discord, everybody in the comments, go ahead, prudish old man Ben, calling it out. I could have done without him grabbing Chio's boob. Uh, yeah, that was that that was. the The weird thing is, um, in that moment, it kind of seemed hilarious to me because he's like, "All right, I need her to hit me, grab at her." That's a handful of boob. That's kind of funny to me. Uh, it's also, but it would be funnier if it weren't obvious. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't mind it so much because neither of them, neither of the responses from them are like gross. It's just like, okay, we're going to pull back from that. Mm -hmm. And then before you can, they can even languish on it, Manana comes in. So it's like, hey, there's, there's no like hint at here. It's just kind of supposed to be funny and a little bit pervy. So... I, th I think that is what makes it forgivable is it's just kind of over and done with yeah. and then they move on. So yeah, this isn't, Oh God, this isn't fucking comedy, comedy girl. Yeah. Like if yeah. It, they don't do that. So for that, if this were the heights that this show went to, I'd be like, whatever. Like it, it, it was, it was mostly harmless, a little etchy. And then there, there's a great payoff to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. This part was actually like kind of the least interesting part of this whole segment to me mm -hmm. because yeah. I, 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 first of all, I do like the idea that, oh, they're related. Cool. There's a connectivity between these characters. Usually I don't like stuff like that because I'm like, well, that's a coincidence. But you know what? I like the idea of tightening up this cast a little bit. Have some interconnectivity. Um, but that being said, it was also kind of the least interesting part for me because uh, it tried to do a lot of things in that scene. A lot of things, and I mm -hmm. don't think it did any of them as well as it could have if it just cut one or two down. I, I don't know. I think, if anything, I might feel the opposite, where because it wasn't, like, knocking it out of the park with any particular thing, I like the fact that it kept it very breezy. Yeah, like, yeah, that's also fair. Yeah, like, yeah. pacing-wise, it's funny to say for one part of <laughs> one segment of a three-segment episode, mm -hmm. but even at that, like, yeah, bang, 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 keep it moving. Sure, great. Yeah. Another show would have tried to have stretched this out into a whole episode, I feel like. Yeah. But yeah. That, that being said, you know, I uh, I love this show. I'm, I still do. I get so many laughs out of it. It it constantly makes me feel like a kid again. And in, not, in the, not in the escapist sort of way, but in the, oh my God, I remember doing stupid shit like that sort of way. And mm. I love it. I love this. Thank you, thank you, Geo School Road, for continuing to just be yourself. That's all I need. Well, I've been—I feel like I've been kind of down on this show for a while, but I think this pair of episodes were were a step up from mm. where it's been. Uh, and also, with a with a three episode watch list, I have a little more tolerance for. Yeah, you know what? It's it's all right. Yeah, I, all right is fine. I can handle all right. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw up that eggplant. I think it would take too long to explain why I'm doing this. So I'm just going to say it didn't do a whole lot for me. And I think I'm done watching it. Damn. I didn't expect that. Do you want to have a talk about escapism and entertainment? A little bit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, what else look, are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm actually curious your thoughts. Yeah. Like, okay. So mostly this has to do with like my mindset when, when I watch this kind of stuff. Uh, if I if I'm ever like really really down, right? The point, the reason people watch shows like this is to find something like you just mentioned earlier that it it's something for me to not feel like my life is so bad, right? Like it's something that is supposed to inherently be 
pleasant and you know, the, like the escapist nature, almost entirely. That's what it's for. Yeah. And I was in the, I was in a moment where I needed that, and that didn't give it to me at all. I was ah. like, I know exactly what you're doing. I know where your script is going, and that just doesn't do anything for me. Ah. Like, I, I see where you're coming from with invoking nostalgia, and yeah, I was a kid and having that. Like, I still get that with the show, and I still like have fun at points with it, but. For, for when I have something I want to watch that is in the, of that nature, I want something that's a bit more captivating than this. It's a little too lukewarm. I wish it was a little crazier. Toothless? I guess. Would you say toothless? Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I feel like it has that edgy, the not not edgy, the the etchy yeah. pervy stuff, and like that's its only real bite. Uh, and that uh, that only goes so far. I I would say that I I don't think toothless is the word you're looking for. I think you know the like the game brain stuff and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The visual like a yeah. lot of the visual metaphors it uses. Mm -hmm. I like that stuff. And yeah, the last two episodes actually had less of that. Yeah, it had less of the visual metaphors. A lot of less of the game brain stuff. Um, we had uh, we did have a lot of that stuff that I love where it's like oh hey. Um, she's into the boys' love stuff, and then yeah, I, yeah, I like that and, a lot. Yeah, and the subversion of that, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, oh, I'm just gonna play this game, stayed up, completely screwed it up. Like yeah, but at the same time, yeah, um, it's unfortunately got a problem of just being a little bit too like too mundane at sometimes. Yeah, um, and I, I think that's mostly what it is. Is when at least for, for the nature of it's it's fine if like you're doing okay. And you want something to just keep that, like, yeah, everything is pleasant. It's cool. Look at these cute girls doing cute things. That whole fucking tropey genre now that exists in anime. And it's like that with a premise like this, I feel like you could do so much. I like what they're doing, but I feel like now I'm like the silent thing you mentioned. The fact that they had that, like, that silent bit there really playing with the medium. That's what I want to see more of. And we got one of those. And that was it. Yeah. Like, hey, it's cool. It's it's exactly what it is. It hasn't changed. I think I've changed a tiny, only slightly <laughs> in realizing that under those circumstances in which the show should be doing something a bit more, it really wasn't. Yeah. And, you, you know, I, I, I see where you're coming from on that. And I agree, actually. I, I wish it were doing more of its visual stuff. Like, again, first couple of episodes were doing these things that were like, I love the game brain stuff. Yeah. I like I like a lot of the, again, their visual metaphors. Uh but a lot of this was character interaction stuff. Mm -hmm. And the character interaction stuff is good, but it's not as off the wall. It's not as zany. I think like the character interaction stuff is fun, but these characters aren't given more. Like they're, they all right now are just very kind of two note. Like I'm, you're going to show up in this scene and you're going to do one of two things. That's yeah. just how they all go. And I don't know. It's fine. It's like, it's, it's not bad, but I think I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that. I'm glad we talked about that because, yeah, I like I like conversations like these. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of what we're here for. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm honestly now. I wonder. I mean, there's a reason why we don't confer beforehand here. I kind of wonder if I knew that you were gonna knife it, would I have knifed it too? Hmm. Well, well, we'll never know. Now, yeah. No take backs, these motherfuckers. Oh, that is not me saying I want to flip <laughs> the script. Just, just me kind of wondering, like, if I thought th that there was a possibility that my vote might make the difference, would I have voted <laughs> differently, <laughs> or, or was I just wanting, you know, for for so much of this season, I've been the person like knife, knife, fuck all this shit. Did I just really want for fucking once to be the person saying, you know what? Yeah, let's eggplant it. It's it's all right. It's pretty yeah, okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I said that I don't want this, if, if I were to say that I don't want this show to live to the end, I'd be lying. I, I want I want this show to live to the end. I've, Shield School Road has been one of those shows that has brought me joy. Mm -hmm. the, another one we'll talk about in a minute here. Yeah. Or right now. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, it is what's up next. Oh, my God. <laughs> Happy Sugar Life. In episode eight, in a flashback, we see how Pink Girl came to live in apartment 1208. Meanwhile, Pedo Bear has exactly not 0.5 seconds of self-realization, but because this show is this show, it doesn't last, and Pink Girl conscripts him to be Small Girl's White Knight and take care of Bro Bro. Pedo Bear calls Bro Bro with false information to get him to search elsewhere for Small Girl. And then in episode 9, 
Pedo Bear throws Brobro off Small Girl's trail, and although Brobro is suspicious, he has no other leads, so he decides to follow Pedo Bear's red herring. Normal Girl and Brobro have a nice scene together, and I shit you not, I wrote in my notes before seeing the end of this episode, well, that was nice and sweet, which means one of them will probably get murdered or something. <laughs> Normal girl sees small girl outside of apartment 1208 and takes a picture, so pink girl murders her. And as I so often say, that is the Cliff's Notes ass version. Yeah. It's, I mean, that last sentence is it felt like about half this episode. That is about half the episode, which is just... Yeah, and that's not me saying yeah. it took too long because it was, and this might be the last nice thing I say about this, <laughs> it was very well executed. I, this trite, you think cliche so. bullshit that they're mm -hmm. doing was very well executed in the last half of this episode. <laughs> 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 because this is why, with a few exceptions, which I've tried to give credit to or credit's due, this is why I don't like this show. Because... Why do I care about any of these characters? Why do I care about any of these nice moments when I'm sitting there arms folded like you're just you're just setting me up to think there's hope when I know there's none. So I'm not going to get invested in this. You know, that's 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 a fair way to look at it. Um I'm I'm not going to agree on, on it necessarily, <laughs> but it's a fair it's a fair perspective. So yeah, let's talk about, uh, was it eight, the first one? Uh, mm -hmm. Eight is the first one. I mean, we don't have to go in any particular chronological order. If you want to just, just jump I ahead just wanna, to the meat. I just want to say okay. how how happy I was that our, our, expecta our expectations for that were met. And in my opinion, exceeded that it's going to, like, the flashback in episode eight was oh, yes. incredible. Oh my God, it's like, what I, exactly what I wanted. I know, we were and like, they did it even better. Yeah, and Holy I'm like, shit. we were like, oh, now it's not gonna, now, now we set it up to be too good. No, it was exactly that from his perspective and the fact that he only speaks in fucking static and that whole thing. I was just, I was enraptured with that. I thought that was so unique. I, I've so rarely seen that done in a modern show, I should say. I've seen it a lot in like early 90s psychological shit. Yeah, right. I thought that was really cool to see. Yeah, that's exactly like because I in that one shot in the last episode, I'm like, well, that's really cool. But they're probably like, yeah. I couldn't. I, I was like, remove your expectations, Scott, because now if they don't do it, you're gonna be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and not only did they have him speak through like the dialogue mm -hmm. on screen and the t like, I went and read the manga. They did it way better than the manga. And the manga, Ooh, okay. in yeah, the manga, I'm, I'm gonna go see that. Yeah, it was good in the manga. Mm -hmm. It's way better here just okay. because of the visual things that they do. Oh yeah, I think the audio and the visuals really go the extra mile for honestly this whole show. But in that scene in particular, I think it was super effective. And when you see when she brings Shio in and you see like the sentences forming now out of the lines and he's like, what, what, why isn't she? No, I only like her when she's needs something. I only like her when she's incomplete. I was like, damn. Yeah. That was creepy stuff. Uh, and I, and I, I dug it and mm -hmm. I was the moment that he notices that she's happy. It's not, yeah. I thought it was going to be a, like, I should be the one making her happy. No, it's, I don't like when she's happy. Yeah, I don't that's like when she's the, happy. That's mm -hmm. not the person I fell in love with. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. who? Yeah. And then, and then we find out how he died. It was the easel upside the head. And which I'm, I'm so curious what, like they keep showing that image covered in the cloth. Oh, I know, right? Cuz I I can just see at the end they'll do a reveal, she'll be fucking dead in the room and the she'll it'll fall off and it'll be her face covered in his blood. But, you know. Yeah. Uh I I loved that flashback. I really did. Yeah. I I feel like it did it did a good job of showing what I want to see more of in anime shit, more visuals than telling like he doesn't talk. The camera is on her because she is an object. She is being drawn because she's an object removed from him. I like that. Um, I guess we should talk about Pedo Bear and his, uh, yeah, split <laughs> second moment of self-realization yeah. <laughs> that is brought crashing down in a very unrealistic and yet still good It way. only, it, I think it worked for me. Like, I was like, oh my God, really? Is he going to have this? But of course not. But I'm happy that happened because that actually, that little jump scare, that fucking got me. <laughs> When uh, she's when she shows up right behind oh, him. Oh yeah. Of like, oh shit, okay. You got me. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. It's it's really obvious. Like, uh, the show okay, so maybe like you you you've been calling a lot of what's going to happen in this show, um rather rather succinctly. Um I'm 
I can totally see why you knew that she was going to die, but I thought the show had done a good job at subverting expectations enough to where I wasn't sure if she was going to die. See, that's that's the thing. Anytime I have a split second of doubt, like maybe this good thing can actually happen, I never feel like... Mm-hmm. I always feel like, well, that's because I'm stupid. <laughs> that's because I'm an idiot. I am an idiot for believing the naked manipulations that this show does. Well, I, it's, I never feel it's because this show is being clever. I feel it's be, like because I am stupid. And that's not a good, fun feeling. <laughs> well, uh, the naked manipulation here was in full force. And I don't like, like here's the thing. I don't like this scene with Pedo Bear primarily because it is literally there a very, like, in sometimes I'm okay with it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, I know what you're doing here, but you're doing it so well that I'm invested. Mm-hmm. Here, it was a matter of, man, I, I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I should stop this. And what happens? Oh, nope. Pink hair is, pink hair is here to make sure that you stay the creep that you are. And Well, yeah, I, I like because how it resolves, I think, is still telling for the whole like extended metaphor they have here with... I'm going to be a working adult while having this in my pocket. I'm going to do, I will go to my obstructive, incredibly oppressive work culture while still liking my child porn. And like, that's what, that's what they're talking about with that. And I feel like that still makes it just as prescient for what they've been doing the whole time. I don't think that makes it worse. I think that's, yeah, that's just true to what they've been trying to go for. I, yeah. I, I think, yeah, if, if, if this whole segment with Pedo Bear did anything well, it was that. The yeah. fact that the happiest conclusion that he can conceive exactly. for himself is, is well, I'm just always going to be this way, but I will successfully suppress it. Yes. He, he can't conceive of a healthier life for himself. He can't conceive of not being part of this corporate machine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, and... That, that that I did like. I liked. I just didn't like the manner in which it was set up and in, in, in yeah. And I, it's That's, a little it's a little hammy, but yeah. I I like where it went. So I guess I'm okay with it. Yeah. More. I, I just feel like the show has been markedly better mm-hmm. at, at 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 its manipulation. There here, it was just literally one scene of sudden doubt and then immediate like pullback. Yeah. Although, oh man, the yeah. sock thing made me so no. Oh no. I can't, I can't deal with this. Uh, that was good. It was, <laughs> it was oh, great. God, that was the grossest thing. Um, she was just wearing it. <gasps> uh, anyway. They got vending machines for that shit, man. It's not like it's not there. I know, but it's still bad. <laughs> we also, they also have cigarettes in their vending machines, so. Uh, yep. Um, but so afterwards, uh, and, and then, then, we have, then we have episode nine, which... I feel like this is the the second best, with the ant being only slightly better, so, in my opinion. So, I wasn't sure how this was going to shake out, because the show's been kind of in, like interested in subverting some expectations, but it's kind of like you said, like to think that there could be a happy ending, or ha- some happiness out of this, is stupid, because that's not what the show is interested in giving, but... They did such a good job, I felt like, at giving you this sliver of hope. This sliver of an idea of, like, you know, look at what she told uh, Sato? Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at what she told Sato. Look at the imagery there. Look at the visuals. And 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 she's like, she's not going to be afraid to speak out anymore. And yeah, I'm like, I yeah. feel like they're getting kind of giving up, like, yeah, maybe, maybe she'll leave. And then no. No, absolutely not. Not happening. I, I, I was only ever so slightly... Like, maybe she'll maybe she'll get out. She probably could still die. Oh, up to the door, she is still has a target on her back. And I was like, oh, maybe. Okay, that was good. I could. That's a good resolution. And then, I think what makes it work for me was how well executed the the killing was. Oh yeah, so because I- the what they do with the colors, and I know you've mentioned. Uh, how like them showing the violence takes it down. They don't show specifically what she's doing. They keep it off the camera ever so slightly. Yeah. And I feel like that that is an extra length to help sell to help sell it for me. Yeah. The use of negatives in this. The, oh, yeah. yeah. Like I I was gonna say, I've been a critic of the violence in this show because it always comes off as less interesting mm-hmm. than it, when they don't show it. Like, every moment has always been kind of underwhelming and plays poorly to the, the show's strengths. 
this is the first time in this show where its use of violence hit me exactly the way that it <laughs> wanted to. Yeah. Like, watching the the struggle at the end there, I was just sinking in the back oh, of my seat like, yep, this is, this is the, like, death of the best character in this show. Yeah. The, o- the only character who has, up until this point, not had... A like a no, without a, a turn, a or, psychotic yeah. break. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, and there it is. That here is the point where the show can no longer promise you any kind of hope. Yeah, because that that would be the biggest. Oh, finally, it it has to stop lying to me. Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I I was just sitting there the whole time, like, okay. Yeah, the show with the aunt. Yeah, with the aunt, with the police officer's oh my hat, God, with, oh and the my rain, God. and the bird, and the insert song. Like, they do, they really go the extra mile for these last, like you said, what feels like half the episode, but it's more like, I don't know, five minutes. Yeah. What a, oh my God, that segment is amazing. Yeah, like, it, that was really good. I, I really liked it. And I'm, I'm glad you liked that, that five minutes as well. <laughs> or at least part of it. I mean... <laughs> I, it was like sitting there. It was like an out of body experience. <laughs> sitting there on the one hand, uh, appreciating aesthetically what they were doing, like yeah. recognizing intellectually that they were doing some cool things while feeling nothing emotionally, <laughs> feeling no attachment, just giving so little of a shit. <laughs> because, of course. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like, so I don't know. Enjoyed might be too strong a term for it. Like I appreciated the artistic merit that went into yeah. the scene. The the one thing that got me, and I'm, I was I kept trying to remember: Did the policeman have his hat when he left before, or does the hat being there mean that nah he came back for some of that? I think oh, he came back. Yeah, because that's what I got out of it. Yeah, and, and when I saw that, he came back. Yeah, and that was the one thing that got me. I laughed out loud when I saw that hat. Yeah, that was the one thing that actually drew any kind of emotional anything from me was <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. Oh, I, I won't lie to you. I saw that and I sunk back to my seat like, ah, oh, he did. <sighs> oh no! Because she's just sitting there with that smile, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you're amazing. <laughs> I love the aunt. The oh my god, the aunt in this is just the oh my god. Her introduction, and then I don't know what they plan on doing with. I don't any either, but that. she's she's such a good fucking villain. I love it. She's, it's weird because she's definitely like, I don't know what to describe her as in this. She's kind of a villain, but a victim. But it's like, what is she? She's I think like, that's like the that uh, you've said something right there. I want to touch on is every <laughs> what I think is the most intriguing part of this to me because by the by the numbers, this is. Every, a bunch of other horror shit, ah, spooky, stabby shit happens. But what you just said is why I think this is cool. Every single person is a villain and a victim. Yeah, it's true. Like, every single character has been through shit and is subsequently doing terrible things. And Except for the one character who Except for the died. one character who just got fucking killed. And most, no, uh, most notably throughout this last episode, uh, Sato... Um, Sato and uh, not Sato, the the brother yeah. was talking about uh, talking to what's his face, the blonde haired dude, Pedro Bear, we've been calling him. Uh, that you're just like every other adult, every other adult, which the show has painted that adults are fucking terrible and they will always just take advantage of whatever they can and they're only seeking to use people to get what they want. And the fact that this is mostly tailored to high schoolers talking about how they are trying to go into adulthood. We have Pedo Bear saying, I'm going to be a monster, but I will still try my best. Whereas Sato is not, well, is doing that. She's like, I'm doing my best. I have this, you know, creepy secret. And the teacher is still doing his job, but has a creepy secret. Like, and it's saying, I think, more so that every single person, whether you want to admit it or not, has some shit. And I feel like I do. Everyone here at this table probably does. And you don't want to talk about it. And the second it gets unearthed on Twitter, your career's done. But I feel like that's just how fucking life is. And so for what that's saying about shit, I love it. Because this is such a sobering message about humanity. That people are fucking shitty. But we all do our best to try and make it work. I mean... Come on. This show... 
The only reason that the show kind of works for me as well as it does is that it it is just unabashed with exactly that. It wants to it it but it does give you these slivers of good people and ideas yeah. of, of of being a better person. Um, and usually the the only grasp that people have at being a better person are often brought down by other people. And, and that's kind of like that's kind of the fucked up part about all this is that you can't like being a better person has to be a strength from within. You've yeah, got to yeah. work on it. And as we see here, Sato is like the worst person in this. And like she is the villain <laughs> yeah. of the show. Sato <laughs> is like going to destroy the whole world to get what she wants. Yeah. And that's that's the one thing I like. It's so ugh, the watch. But yeah, I, I gotta I gotta give it this because the last two episodes just did this so goddamn well. I feel like any time the show does any of that shows you any glimmer of anything beyond people are just nihilistic monsters and fuck everything is is just to manipulate the audience so that they can pull that rug. Uh, sorry, Lucy, I'm not going to try to kick your fucking football. <laughs> this show's terrible. It's sometimes manages to be artistic with its, with its terribleness, but... I'm glad you're seeing some kind of redeeming <laughs> anything to it, because boy, I'm not. Yeah. And and I will sit here any day of the week and tell you why Gantz or Berserk or Game of Thrones, which can be every bit as dark, if not darker, still have these redeeming qualities. In In this case, I don't see it. And I don't, like... I try when there's a show that that I can honestly say like, yeah, but it's just not for me. I'm not mm. the intended audience. It's got these. I I don't I don't see it. I, I'm I think it's just bad, and I we're just gonna have to disagree on that. I'm sorry. I'll I'll try and give it its credit when credits due, when when it earns it, and. It has a couple of times, mm -hmm. but boy, those moments are few and far between. Well, that's because you're not watching this show for why we're watching it. I don't think, and, and, and that's not a criticism of you. It's completely not. In fact, it's the reason that you don't like it, and it's a completely valid reason. Because ultimately, he and I are watching it for the same reason. Again, as we've said this before, for the, the people watch horror movies. You yeah. see horrible things happen to people in a helpless situation. That's 99% of horror movies. And most horror movies don't have memorable characters. Or happy endings. Yeah. Like, like to be fair, like you, you talk about Berserk uh, and Gantz, and a lot of those actually do have underpinnings of, of hope. Like Some of those do have underpinnings of like, hey, here's the good of humanity. But oftentimes horror movies... Yeah, I actually, mean, no. There, there, don't. there is a reason why the most horror anything that I have consumed is Stephen King novels. Yeah, because yeah. for all that he's America's boogeyman, his stories almost always have sometimes tragically happy endings. But with with only one exception that I can think of, there's usually like somebody gets out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, no, you're not wrong. Although he did say that the ending to the Mist film, he mm -hmm. was like, "Shit, that's good." <laughs> and the yeah. ending to the Mist film is <laughs> the darkest possible ending yeah, no, I felt like. Yeah, no. that, I, I haven't seen the Mist. I was, I was thinking of, I mean, geez, is is it a spoiler for fucking Pet Cemetery in 2018 <laughs> to say that that one's got one of the best downer endings in fiction that I have ever <laughs> experienced? I mean, it's pretty good, <laughs> but like, yeah, here. Here, we're not looking for the optimism. We're looking yeah. to see, okay, how dark, how fucked up can this get, and can it do it well? Because I've seen, oh my God, King's Game did it so poorly. Yeah, It was the worst at communicating, hey, look at all these shit people being shit to each other, because yeah. there was no believability in anything, in any of it, and it had nothing to say either. Yeah, It was, it was the worst kind of horror movie. One that I was mean, laughably bad at pulling off all of its elements. I mean, yeah. if you want to talk about believability, uh, hey, spoiler warning, if you abduct a small child and leave her alone in an, in an apartment for 16 hours a day, she is not going to be a bright, cheery person when you come home to her. Like, I don't believe any of this shit. Well, as we also see, she's got problems, too. Oh, she's been abused her entire life? I don't know. Yeah, like... That's the, the one thing that I'm wondering if they're going to do now that we're getting into the home stretch is if they're going to actually focus on... Uh, on. I mean, I, th I think that's what they're gearing up for is because Shio's this is... Shio's reaction to this, I it, think, is what's coming up. Yeah. yeah. Is because she, for the first time, like, oh, shit, uh, what's her name? Pink girl. Mm -hmm. 
oh, she just did some shit. Yeah. Like, she just had her whole, like, illusion shattered, which might be compelling if I thought her illusion was realistic or relatable in any way to begin with, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, I, I like, as I've said, I'm not saying that this is all believable, hmm. but I am saying that with the tone, the storyboarding, the music, the way that it has set everything up and the yeah. way that it has paced it and the way that it has framed it has all been a way of, I can suspend my disbelief on a lot of this because the story it's trying to tell is compelling mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, and not only that, this is, uh, again, important to remember, this is an anime, mm -hmm. and so this is this is believable for any other anime setting. Like this uh, girl, cute kawaii moe girl with tiny lolly girl in a household in some circumstances. That's... All, uh, every like five shows every season. Yeah, to, to yeah. be fair, and, and, and yeah, it does work on that level, I suppose, of meta commentary. I just don't particularly give a shit. Yeah, about and, this and meta that's commentary. yes, and I think that's yeah. the ultimate through line is you don't care about that shit. Where we've watched this garbage, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let's see these pieces of shit get fucked up. Yeah, I, I <laughs> here's the thing, I absolutely despise these sorts of shows. Yeah. Like, anything with lowly anything, and you've lost me instantly. Mm. Because the sexualization and the infantilization of women, uh, or the sexualization of children and the inf infantilization mm -hmm. of women is gross to me. I, it just is. Um, which, you know, if that's... I, As I've said before, like what you like. I'm not... This is not... I'm not interested in having that conversation but for me this is taking a hard look at that and showing mm -hmm. you how awful is this actual situation how bad is everything that surrounds it the mentality the practice um without going too far because they could have really yeah. really fucked it up and then like had her actually be sexually abused throughout the series yeah exactly uh, which They've, they've stayed away from that because they knew that's the step where it just goes into territory where, first of all, it could never even air on television. Yeah. And secondarily, nobody could watch that. And the people who could, okay, you might be a little gross. <laughs> well, I, and I think, I think also another thing is you already know all this shit. So it's like I remember your big criticism was, wow, pedophilia is bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> of course that is, but uh, for a lot of anime shit, that, that is something that you got to really beat in for for this stuff okay so while that's salient for you that is not so salient for the people it is trying to target yeah and while it's salient for us it's nice to see communicated to its already audience yes. like yes tell these people <laughs> <laughs> like it, it is kind of nice to like have this like deconstruction i it's cool to see i i love then again, I love deconstructionary art. Like deconstructionary art is some of my favorite stuff because it gets to talk about things. It gets to it gets to make commentary on things, and not a lot of people can do it well. So when I get the good stuff, I'm like, yes, yes. Tell me why this is bad. Tell me why it's awful. I know why it's bad. Please tell me. I'll yes. be real dirty about it. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you know, part of it's gratification. There's totally. Some, some, part of it's part of it's seeing like, yeah, tell me why this little girl being abducted and held like this is a bad thing. Make me feel better about my purview on this. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm I'm over here on record as the guy who says, yeah, I seek out uh, movie reviews and video game reviews that agree with me so that I can oh, have yeah. my own opinion repeated back to me, but <laughs> <laughs> in, yeah. uh, but better written than I am capable of and better yeah. expressed yep. than I am capable of. Yeah, so anytime anybody asks you why you like it, you just take what they said. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. But that, that, that being said, let's uh, try and repeat some people's opinions back to them about Planet With. Yes. In episode nine, Greenman defeats the remaining Sentai forces and seals the world. Bro Bro protects Kuroi Boy, and Kuroi Boy agrees to fight the Dargan if Bro Bro will protect everyone else from being sealed. Bro Bro allows Kuroi Boy to speak into all the Earthlings' minds, and they wake up and become unsealed. Kuroi Boy punches Greenman real hard and calls out Doggo. And then in episode 10, Kuroi Boy and Doggo have a big dumb punchy fight, but Oldman jumps in and circumcises Doggo's big dumb punchy weapon. Kuroi Boy wins and asks the Sentai guys to help him fight the Dargan. Next time, time skip. I, 
as is so often the case. Boy, plot heavy, very dense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, a lot, gave, of, lot of shit. We had third, we had third impact happen, and it's yeah. like, yeah. what it the just, fuck? It just kind of happens, and then unhappens. Yeah. <laughs> like a whole bunch of shit goes on. Yeah, and especially in episode nine, I glossed over a bunch of stuff that was visually very arresting. There was a whole lot of visual storytelling that I'm not even going to try to capture in a one paragraph plot summary. The but, storyboarding was yeah. amazing yes. here. So much of just shot of thing. You know what it means. Shot of thing. You know what it means. Let's move on. Yeah. I, uh, I was not... So, okay, first of all, um, I, did, I can't remember if we covered this in... Uh, the okay, so which was the first episode of these nine? Yeah, nine, yeah. I, did we cover an eight that? Um, I think we covered an eight that the brother of Green Dude was. Or, uh, was the detective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, so fairly sure we covered that, but yeah, uh, it's really it was really cool to see him like, she's gone, I've got nothing left, <laughs> fuck all this, yeah, I'm fuck it, go, I'm gonna go seal the world, I'm done, <laughs> which is. Like just great to see, and not and not in some kind of malice, but in some, I I was wrong. This is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he goes uh, goes out there with that big ceiling weapon, which I'm like, you know, I can understand why you'd save that. Like <laughs> if the other ones don't work, but it's like, man, sure was convenient that you saved that one till the very <laughs> end. I, I, mean, I think it was that the the fusion is what made it crazy. Yeah. That's that's the implication that I got that he fused with it and that's what made it like super good. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. He he had to fuse with it to do it to the whole world at once. Yeah. yeah. That that said, speaking of plot conveniences, well, that was the last ceiling device. Oh, except for this one <laughs> yeah. that I've had in my back pocket the whole time. <laughs> Which but, yeah. was kind of a weird Chekhov's gun that never goes off. Yeah. I mean, I think it was supposed to just be there to give stakes to the doggo Kuroi boy fight. Yeah. I mean, it's it's there, but I feel like he literally could have used anything, but literally is like, well, I've got this really small ceiling device. It'll never actually get used, so it's kind of Yeah, just but weird it's to, here, so... Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, you know it's never going to get used, because, no, we're not going to seal the world again <laughs> an episode later. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what? Next episode's episode 11. We're not doing shit with that. You know what's happening, but... I mean, like, I feel like that miniature ceiling device, what could that have even done? Maybe a person. Get punched. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I know we're skipping ahead, but I just got to... Can we talk about the final punch? That was... I love what that did, with just the him punching his face and him punching the punching the thing. And I and, and I do love that it's a callback to the last time it happened, but mm -hmm. it, they, they elaborate on it. They, like, they up it. it and, and I was just... I was actually like, fuck yes! <laughs> I hate to be the, the dissenting opinion here, but I'm back to, oh, so we're just doing worse Gurren Lagan again? Great. A little bit. Like, like it's, if I hadn't seen Gurren Lagan, maybe I would have been right there like, yeah, but mm -hmm. I have already seen this done better, and I was hoping, I was really hoping that this show had something more interesting to do than let's solve all the world's problems by punching something real hard. And look, there's two more episodes I, left. Yeah. I'm, let's, let's just, okay, look, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I've come this far. <laughs> I am not two episodes before the end going to say, well, and this show's garbage fucking <laughs> forever. I'm in this for the long haul. I am in this to see <laughs> what they are going to do. Yeah. But these two episodes, all the hope that I had, it feels like they took a step forward and then another big step back. I, I definitely got that impression too. Like they were, they were building up to some, like, I feel like they were building up to a direction we all saw that mm -hmm. either is going to come into play with the dragon or they're not doing. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of interesting because I'm not too sure. Like I was, I was kind of sitting back like, what is their out with generalismo? Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. their, what, it, how do you handle this? And so when it came down to, yeah, we're going to fight, there was a part of me that was disappointed, like like legitimately disappointed, because I'm like, ah oh, man, a fight. First of all, one of my least favorite things in this show is the fighting. I mean, again, really well storyboarded. I'm glad that like it sets it up, but and the sound. Yeah, oh yeah, and the sound. By the way, I was right. I guessed that it was the JoJo guy. I oh, looked yeah. up the sound directors <laughs> exactly the JoJo guy. I was right. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, I was a little bit disappointed because I was like, ah man, all right, so we're gonna do a whole big fight scene and there's gonna be a lot of hopes and, and ideas at play here. And yeah. it's gonna go up into fucking space. Yeah. And then finally Although I did actually really like the fact that both Generalismo and uh Senpai were like, eh, do we 
not sure we want to use this. Yeah. And then the pilot's like, for fuck's sake, this is the big fight. Just <laughs> yeah, you got to do, do it. it. Okay, fine. Yeah, I like. I I just love their hesitation there because yeah. it was it was funny and very human moment. I kind of dug on that, um, mm. and so we see this big old fight happen, and it's a good fight. It's it's a good fight. I, I think they kind of overuse the trope of simultaneous punching. Like I I was sitting there mm -hmm. going, you know. I hate to be the guy who quotes Futurama again, but perfectly symmetrical violence won't get us anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that trope. I love oh, the, I love that the shit. Vegeta Goku like cross punch in their own in each other's faces in the uh -huh. Majin Vegeta fight. Yeah. But when you do it eight times in one goddamn fight sequence, it starts to lose its impact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tiny bit. I like how they're. I mean, I I I kind of like what that leads up to ultimately with. Like, cause it all kind of crescendos into I'm not punching you, I'm punching your idea. Yes, thank and you. That's, that's what I like. I was about to say, Dinalismo goes for the face. Yeah. Senpai goes for the heart. Which, which is yeah. interesting, considering that uh, the uh, doggo, as I've been calling him, the Generalissimo, mm -hmm. he he says at the beginning of this fight. My job is to break your will, not your body. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, but when it came down to it. He's the one punching the face. <laughs> yeah. He he didn't really seem to have any plan for actually breaking Kuroi's will. No, and I because I like what that kind of says about him because even when they when they come back and they everyone comes out of the the ceiling, uh, he's like his tail's wagging. He's like, oh yeah, we get to fight now. Because yeah. <laughs> like that's that's what he wants, and I feel like that's a that's still in line with I think what our faith was placed that oh yeah the guy that wants all the power is the guy who wants to use it yeah yeah but it's also and it also comes into play of he's realized he's been kind of doing some shit mm -hmm. uh, and when he says I don't want to win this without a fight I think it's a matter of I need to prove that I'm right I need you to fight me because otherwise I don't know how to win and feel good about this like, I need a real fight from you, and I need to beat you so at the end of the day I can stand tall and triumphant. Yeah, well, I think the other thing, too, is his whole stated reason is you need to be sealed because you're a hopelessly violent race. Yeah. If humanity doesn't fight back, that sort of uh, gets rid of his moral authority there, yep. doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah yep. exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that said, humanity is fighting back every time. Every time it comes down to a big knockout, drag-out punch fest can we please move beyond that at this point? Because you've yeah. made that point very well, enough to bring my cynical ass around on <laughs> yeah. this show. Feels like you're kind of choking instead of sticking the landing. Again, with two episodes to go, maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. The fact yeah. that there's a time skip has me very curious. Yeah, like, I was... that is suddenly... Now, now this could be any number of things. There's been years. Are we going to have a change of plans? Is Generalissimo now part of the pacifist? Do we have a super pacifist weapon now? <laughs> like, we're just going to hug the dragon? <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. Dragon, dragon, hug the dragon. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, uh, <laughs> speaking of, I, I want to point out how much I love the ceiling animation. Just the... Or the mm. the imagery of him with his giant arms going all the way around the planet. I thought that was so cool. And then bring it back to the human moment of oh, the world's this is what the world is, huh? It's not so big. You know, as his arms tumbling yeah. down, tumbling down, <laughs> tumbling down. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I was I was all about that too. I what I was all about, which again, may have been me underestimating the show at first. At the As of the end of the ninth episode, I'm sitting there like, really? So humanity unanimously says, no, we won't, we won't mm -hmm, go yeah. quietly into the night. And in the 10th episode, they address that. So mm -hmm. roughly 80% of people chose to get woken up. 20% yeah. are still in comas. Like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> that was, you could have gotten away with having less nuance than you decided to have. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it did that. I never got the impression that it would be everybody, but I could totally see that there. So I'm glad they were just explicit. No. <laughs> There were some people that didn't wake up. I, I would consider 80% to be slightly optimistic, but maybe that's just me being an old cynical man. So I'm, look, it's yeah. not unanimous. That's all I ask is yeah. that, because 
humanity rising up in unanimous consent of any idea is one of those bullshit ideas in fiction that I hate. Especially yeah. to be like, no, I actually, I would like to live my flawed life where I wasn't so happy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? I don't want to escape into my virtual reality or my internet or my whatever I do. Or my lolly porn. Or my <laughs> lolly porn. <laughs> Which, hey, he showed up now with a lolly shirt. Yep, little he's, Moe, little Moe yep, he's, he's back and is worthless <laughs> as ever. <laughs> I'd like to point that, oh yeah, he's back and he didn't do anything. Yep, he just showed up and did nothing. I'm, I'm so glad he didn't do anything. I'm, no, it would have been out of character for him to do something. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I'm mostly just kind of, I left these two episodes more excited. I feel like these two weren't as strong, but... The way 10 ended has me very curious. Yeah, th me too. That's the way that 10 ends is the best part about all of this because it opens up possibilities. Whereas the rest of it was a lot of flash and bang and especially episode nine. Yeah. And I know I'm I know I've been banging okay. on the Gurn Lagan drum really hard, but if you want to talk about time skips, let's talk about something Gurn Lagan didn't do particularly well, because they had their time skip mm -hmm. and then tried to introduce a bit of nuance to their you've just gotta believe yourself in yourself and you'll get in the energy to have a drill that can fuck the heavens. And then after the time skip, like, oh shit, maybe it's more complicated than that. Maybe it's harder to govern than to conquer. Maybe the world is much... Nope, never mind, let's go into space and punch stuff real hard. Like, yeah. as much as I love Gurren Lagan, that's somewhere where they kind of fucked up thematically. Or at least mm -hmm. their, their reach outstripped their grasp. Yeah. And I would love for this show to do better. Yeah. To do something more, to do something more interesting. But the fact that time skips... The, the fact that this show that I've been been damn near deifying squandered that g gives me less hope that Planet With will do any better. Yeah. Who knows, though? But, yeah, who knows? I, I still think it's anti Gurren Lagan, and it's going to, yeah, I yeah. think it's okay. I think it's pre-time skip is going to be the worst part, and the post-time skip is the best. I, you know what? <laughs> Let's all unite unanimously in yeah, hope we'll that that is the case. Yeah. Exactly what it is. If we can agree on one goddamn thing this week. <laughs> okay, yes, good. That, let us all just hope that this is the best part of Planet With, because if it is, That'd be pretty That's good. That's amazing. For the highs the show has had, for the ending to be even better, I'd be pretty impressed. If it kind of farts out, I'll be sad, but I think it tried some shit, and I'll, you know, you tried. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the, <laughs> I'm kind of on the other side where this is a show that has been so up and down, mm. but honestly more down than up as far as I'm concerned. It really kind of sticks, needs to stick the landing for me. Like, so much is riding on what they do with these last two episodes yeah. for my enjoyment. I'm, if it does stick that landing, that's gonna be so awesome. Not only because I just want this show to do well, but I want you to have a show that you didn't <laughs> like and then came around yeah, to like that. It was like, that'd be fun. hey, this ending actually made it worth it. Because not for any self-advocation, just for that to have happened. That would be so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love nothing so much. I will I will eat as much crow as I need to <laughs> if this show... Because what I want yeah. is to have a show coming out of this garbage fire of a season. That you like. <laughs> that I like and can recommend to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Every season up to this point, we've had... If only one show, and usually at least two or three, that's yeah. like, everybody, please watch this. Yeah. I don't have it yet this season. I would like to have it. I would like to be able to be that asshole who says, give it time. <laughs> It'll be worth yeah. it. I can wholly recommend Cells at Work. I just found... Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I think Cells at Work is still... People still really like yeah. it. Yeah, and I know that I know people who are still watching it really like it. Yeah. I just got bored because I'm like, okay, I know cellular biology. I, I'm, I'm married to a biologist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, get like, that, you get that every day. Yeah, it's like I know almost all of these things for the most part, mm -hmm. and I'm just not that invested, even though I know it's good. But I know a lot of people who still love Cells at Work. So at the end of this... Like, when we do the Fuck Buddies, I know I'll have, like, it's totally up there to be recommended, and it's a good, it's still a good show. Yeah. But yeah, it would be nice for the things that actually make it through to the end to be uh, recommendable. Yeah. 
One would hope. I mean, look, I know you've got your show that you'll recommend to anybody I mean, who will listen. I mean, of course. Uh, it's just I'm not among them. <laughs> <laughs> and like, let's like let's be honest. Chio School Road is obviously like I've already said this a couple times. Like, this yeah. is the show every week that always gives me that one heck yeah thing. Yeah. I think it's obvious that I'll, I'll recommend Chio School Road to people. So yeah. Well, I guess we'll see next week whether we have anything to recommend. Yep. <laughs> see you next week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs>